This is the three question warm up for Biochem 15. First question, what are the presenting dermatologic findings with primary, secondary, and tertiary syphilis? So for primary syphilis, it's a painless chancre. For secondary syphilis, it's going to cause a maculopapular rash on the palms and the soles, and then also condyloma lata. And then for tertiary syphilis, the main dermatological manifestation is gummas. Next, which antihypertensives are safe to use in pregnancy? So the mnemonic for these was hypertensive moms love nifedipine. It stands for hydralazine, methyldopa, labetalol, and nifedipine. And the last one, what important secretory products are secreted from the following cells of the GI tract? So the G cells of the stomach secrete gastrin, the I cells secrete CCK, the S cells secrete secretin, the D cells secrete somatostatin, and the parietal cells of the stomach secrete both gastric acid and intrinsic factor. All right, let's get started with the lecture. Hello everyone and welcome to our step one video on amino acid disorders, or as I like to call it, the lecture where we learn about weird smelling and looking pee. All right, so let's move on here. So first we're going to talk about PKU, and PKU stands for phenylketonuria. Now PKU is definitely high yield for step one, it's probably about a four star topic, very likely that you're going to get a question on PKU. So first, what is it? Well, there's actually two ways that you can get PKU. You can either be deficient in the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase, which converts phenylalanine to tyrosine. Now remember, we saw that in the last lecture. Or you can be deficient in the cofactor uh, for phenylalanine hydroxylase, which is a tetrahydrobiopterin. Uh, and so in this disease, just like with any of the other metabolic disorders, uh, if you're deficient in this enzyme, then you have to go to the next step of the pathway and then supplement that particular product. So tyrosine becomes an essential amino acid uh, for these patients because they can't make it on their own anymore. And also, you don't want to give these patients a lot of phenylalanine because it's just going to build up. They can't process it. Uh, and it's going to result in phenylketones. So what are phenylketones? Well, phenylketones include uh, phenylacetate, phenolactate, and phenylpyruvate. So with PKU, these phenylketones build up when you intake uh, a lot of phenylalanine. But realize that the neurotoxic effects are actually related to the high levels of phenylalanine and not to the uh, phenylketones themselves. And as a result, this can cause growth uh, retardation, uh, mental retardation, seizures, uh, fair skin. Now, why would you get that? Well, that's going to be because you can't actually go through that biosynthetic pathway uh, in order to make melanin. So that's why you're going to be fair skinned. Uh, you're also going to see things like eczema, and then uh, what you're going to find on tests, all that sort of this musty uh, body odor. Now, PKU is a disease uh, that you want to diagnose as soon as possible, uh, so you don't get a lot of these manifestations. So, uh, for this reason, we screen infants at two uh, to three days of life. Now, why can't you screen infants right at birth or th for this disease? Well, you have to wait for these uh, phenylketones to build up uh, to a certain measurable level uh, after the delivery because the mom can actually provide tyrosine in utero uh, to the baby. But after delivery, as the baby is getting phenylalanine, it might be getting it through the breast milk, which it's naturally occurring there. And then it's going to start building up its own phenylketones. And so that's when you can actually start testing for these phenylketones. All right, so how do we treat this? Well, uh, patients should avoid phenylalanine to begin with. So what is high in uh, phenylalanine? Well, uh, one uh, place you're going to find a lot is uh, aspartamine, and that's an artificial sweetener. We have that in tons of foods. Now, other foods, and there's a lot of them, high-protein foods, things like dairy products, meat, fish, chicken, eggs, beans, that's so a ton of things, so it really stinks to have PKU. And then again, you need to augment tyrosine into the diet because tyrosine is now essential. And again, it may not be that the enzyme is deficient. Uh, if it's a cofactor deficiency, that tetrahydrobiopterin deficiency, then that would become an, an essential uh, force as well that you're going to have to supplement with. So supplementation of tetrahydrobiopterin could be necessary. Uh, and this needs to be uh, accomplished really within that first three weeks of life in order to prevent the characteristic effects of the, dis of the disorder. Now, what would happen to the infant of a pregnant mom uh, that has PKU uh, that's been maybe managed relatively well uh, her whole life, and then for whatever reason, uh, while she's pregnant, she decides that, well, it's too difficult and she doesn't want to manage it very well at that point. What would happen in that case? Well, the infant, un unfortunately, would have microcephaly, uh, some intellectual disability as well, growth retardation, uh, congenital heart defects. Uh, so these uh, phenylketones and phenylalanine can be quite toxic to the developing uh, fetus. Now let's move on to alcaptonuria. Uh, so let's move on to this uh, next amino acid disorder. And alcaptonuria uh, causes something called uh, ochronosis. And so this is an enzyme deficiency uh, uh, called homogentisic acid oxidase. So these patients can't degrade tyrosine very well. 
Uh, and this is an autosomal recessive disorder, but it's really not as severe as PKU. Now they have this ochronosis uh, taking place where they have homogentistic acid that's getting into the urine and into the connective tissue. And the homogentistic acid uh, is sort of this brown pigmented looking thing. So connective tissues start to become looking uh, darker and brown. The sclera can, and, uh, have this characteristic dark brown pigment in it as well. And then the urine is going to turn black, especially when it's exposed to uh, air. Uh, and they can have arthralgias again uh, because those homogentistic acid uh, residues are going to be deposited in the connective tissue in the joints. And that's actually uh, toxic to cartilage as well. All right, so that's going to be all you need to know about alcaptone in your ear. Think of that real dark urine exposed to air. Now, let's move on to albinism. So albinism can uh, be caused by a few different things here. Now, one of which is uh, the processing of tyrosine. So here, you can either have a uh, tyrosinase deficiency or defective tyrosine transport. So if you can't get tyrosine into the cell, uh, then it can't be metabolized into melanin. And so those are, are two ways that you can have albinism. Another way that you can have albinism is by not having melanocytes where they're, where they're supposed to be. So do you remember the origin of melanocytes? Remember, they come from the neural crest cells. Uh, and so if you don't have melanocytes uh, to make melanin, then you're not going to have any pigment and you'll have albinism as well. Or if those melanocytes can't uh, make melanin because uh, they can't uh, use that tyrosine uh, to make melanin, that would be that other way that we just talked about in the first part. And of course, whenever you have this, your skin is less protected from uh, things like the sun, so you're going to get skin cancer more often from that sun damage uh, and the uh, thymine dimers that come about from sun damage as well. Moving on, let's move on to uh, homocystinuria, so another amino acid disorder, uh, homocystinuria. So like the name says, this is having homocysteine in your urine. So why would you have this? Well, homocysteine is usually converted to uh, cystathionine, and then cystathionine uh, gets converted to cysteine. Well, in the conversion of homocysteine to uh, cystathionone, uh, the enzyme that's required is cystathionine synthase, uh, and that requires cofactor B6. So the causes of homocysteinuria include a deficiency of that enzyme, that cystathionine synthase, uh, a decreased affinity uh, of that cystathionine synthase for the uh, paradoxal phosphate, so a B6 cofactor. So if it's not interacting with B6 correctly, it's not going to work very well. Or if you have a deficiency of uh, homocysteine methyltransferase, so that's an enzyme that actually converts homocysteine to uh, methionine. So these are the three main reasons why you might have a lot of homocysteine in your urine. So what are the clinical manifestations of this? Well, in addition to homocysteine in your urine, these patients will have a lot of things like uh, intellectual uh, uh, retardation again, tall stature, osteoporosis, kyphosis, atherosclerosis even, and then subluxation of the lenses of the eye. So when in, what, in other, what other disorder might you have some, that subluxation of the lens? Remember that was Marfan syndrome. So two genetic disorders to be aware of that cause lens subluxation, homocystinuria and Marfan syndrome. Now the one difference between the two is that we see a downward lens dislocation in homocystinuria and in uh, Marfans we see an upward lens dislocation. So how do you treat homocystinuria? Again, you have to know the metabolic pathway, and you have to go around the metabolic pathway. So uh, if it's a cystathionine synthase problem, then you're going to want to decrease methionine in the diet. You're going to increase cysteine in the diet because then uh, you can't actually produce that further down the pathway. And then also you need to be increasing B12, folate, and B6 especially in the diet. So the diet should be very high in those extra uh, uh, vitamins in that uh, scenario, and then add on cysteine. That's the other big one. Next, let's move on to S adenosyl uh, methionine. Uh, so, since we were just talking about homocysteine, let's go. Uh, we're going to mention another substance. And this is SAM. That's the easy way of saying it. So, S adenosyl uh, methionine. So, why is SAM uh, important? Well, SAM is going to be transferring methyl units in your body. And the transfer of methyl units is particularly important for the conversion of norepinephrine to epinephrine and also for the synthesis of uh, phosphocreatinine. So for those two interactions, you need to have SAM. Now, what else do you need to know about uh, SAM? Well, it's made from uh, ATP and methionine, so that's how you actually get SAM. And the regeneration of methionine is uh, dependent upon B12 and folate. So if you don't have a lot of B12 uh, and folate around, then you're not going to have very much methionine either. And without much methionine, you can't make uh, SAM, the s adenosyl methionine. And if you can't have SAM, then you're not going to be able to make uh, much phosphocreatine or epinephrine uh, from norepinephrine. So that's what you really need to know about SAM. It's there as a methyl group donor, and it's really going to uh, help you with some of your catecholamine development. 
Next, we're moving on to just plain old cystinuria. Uh, and this is another amino acid disorder. Uh, cystinuria is a defect of the renal tubular amino acid uh, transporter for COLA. And what is COLA? It's C-O-L-A. And that's a mnemonic for cysteine, ornithine, lysine, and arginine. Now, this transporter is normally found in the proximal convoluted tubule of the kidney. But with cystinuria, you have a defect of that cola transporter in the proximal convoluted tubule. So why is cysteine in your urine a problem? Well, you can form cysteine uh, kidney stones. And the way that you can prevent this is with acetazolamide. So acetazolamide is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor uh, that's going to alkalinize the urine, actually prevent the development uh, of those kidney stones. Moving on, maple syrup urine disease, delicious. So uh, this is another amino acid disorder. It's gonna put a lot of weird stuff in your urine called maple syrup uh, uh, urine disease. And in this disorder, the urine smells like uh, maple syrup. Probably doesn't taste like it though. Uh, and the reason why this is, is because you're filled with these branch chain amino acids, isoleucine, leucine, and valine. Now one mnemonic that you can use is I love maple syrup, which is true. Uh, where the I is isoleucine, uh, L is leucine, and then the V is valine. And this comes about because of a deficiency in the enzyme complex called the branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex. It's a long one. Now, it's supposed to be breaking down all these branch chain amino acids. And if the enzyme is deficient, then these branch chain amino acids, they don't get degraded like they're supposed to, and they build up in the urine and in the blood along with the corresponding branch chain uh, alpha keto acids. And so you have more alpha keto acids in the urine and in the blood, and this causes, uh, again, intellectual deficiencies and severe CNS defects and actually a pretty high mortality rate as well. And then the last disorder we're going to talk about is Hartnup disease. Hartnup uh, disease is an autosomal recessive defect of a transporter in the intestine uh, and in the kidneys. And it's supposed to be transporting uh, neutral amino acids like tryptophan. And this is, this is going to cause a tryptophan to be excreted into the urine and not be absorbed in the gut. So what happens when you don't have tryptophan? Well, if you don't have tryptophan, your body can't make niacin. And when your body can't make niacin, you get pellagra. Well, and we'll talk about pellagra in more detail when we get to the vitamin deficiencies, uh, but this is vitamin B3, a, a vitamin B3 deficiency. And we're deficient in vitamin B3 or niacin, it causes a triad of things, dermatitis, diarrhea, and dementia. So those are the three Ds of vitamin B3 deficiency or the three Ds of pellagra. Remember, it's dermatitis, diarrhea, and dementia. And that's the highest yield stuff, so you need to know about that one. All right, that's gonna be it for our amino acid disorders. It's time for that end of session quiz. Let's go through those answers together. First question here, a full-term neonate becomes intellectually disabled and hyperactive and has a musty odor. What's the diagnosis? So remember that musty odor is the big clue for PKU, phenylketonuria. Next, a patient with PKU should have diet uh, low in phenylalanine. What other dietary modification should a patient with PKU uh, make? So first you got to increase tyrosine in the diet because now it's essential because you can't make it. And then you're going to potentially have to replace that tetrahydrobiopterin cofactor if it's a deficiency there. So it could be part of the treatment also uh, depending on the type of PKU that you have. Next, a middle-aged man has dark spots on his sclera and has noted that his urine turns black uh, when left sitting for a period of time. I don't know why he's doing that, but oh well. Uh, what is the diagnosis? Remember, that's that alcaptonuria, uh, urea, uh, and that's going to change that really nasty urine uh, black. Next, what is the underlying cause of maple syrup urine disease? Remember, that's that deficiency in the branch chain uh, alpha keto acid uh, dehydrogenase complex. So you have alpha keto acids in the urine because you can't break down those, those amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Remember, those are the branch chain amino acids. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of Biochem uh, 15. I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. Oh, hello there. Let's play a little game. I've got a treat for you. I'll give you three clues. See if you can guess the condition. One, it is caused by deficiency of the enzyme, alpha keto acid dehydrogenase. Two, it leads to a buildup of the three branched amino acids, isoleucine, leucine, and valine. Three, last hint, it can cause mental retardation and death. That's right, it's maple syrup urine disease. The name comes from a sweet, distinct maple syrup-like smell from the patient's urine. <laughs> oh, honey, you want some milk? Oh, oh, where are you?
you going? Oh well, <laughs> more for me. <laughs>